up everyone and welcome back to another video and in this video I'm going to be painting a, another blue mill border collie called Ghost. You might recognise part of this painting a bit later on because I did use this painting for a recent white fur tutorial. So when I get to that part of painting I will link to that white fur tutorial. For anyone who's not seen that they might find my channel via this video for example. But meanwhile it's uh, all my usual supplies which I've listed in the description and also it's this one's a bit bigger than a lot of my paintings this one's A2 size which for people that are not familiar with the standard ISO paper sizes is approximately 16.5 by 23.4 inches So anyway, a little bit more about the subject. Ghost is an obedience dog, he's a border collie. And I've done paintings before for his owner of other dogs that she's had before Ghost. He's an obedience champion and he wins lots of tickets and reserve tickets and I see her posting them on Facebook all the time. So I've no idea how many he's actually won, I know it's just quite a lot. She's been competing in obedience for years now, a long long time, so she's really experienced in it so and I think uh, Ghost is her first male as well and she's fallen in love with males now she's admitted that she's got another dog as well now a, a growing pup and that's a male as well so yeah I think males have won the day for same as me with my males <laughs> we've been quite a big painting I were able to get stuck into quite a lot of detail in this one some smaller paintings you can struggle to get more detail in so in this one I were able to add a lot more and it was quite a bit easier as well I find it a lot easier to work the bigger that you work when you're working smaller it is actually quite a bit harder So here we are with tongue and I find that a lot of tongues have a lot of cool tones in them. People just think pink but no, there's a lot of cool tones in tongues I find. And I have to use phalo blue or aquamarine blue a lot. And this tongue in particular had a lot of cool tones in it. It was quite bluish coloured. For me, the most time consuming part of doing a tongue is just getting the base colour in and getting it nice and smooth before you put the little details on because acrylic's difficult to blend getting the transition from the shadow at top at tongue and then the different values down the tip at tongue because you get areas that are more hot pink and then areas that are more cool and bluish and getting it all nice and smooth in acrylic can take a little bit longer so I find that that is the most time consuming bit for a tongue for me. I find that open mouths in general take a lot longer to do for me as well than when you've got a pet portrait and its mouth is closed. Because you've got your teeth and your gums and your lips and everything. And there's a lot going on there, there's a lot of details and what have you and it can take quite a bit to make it look right. It does tend to look good once you've done it but it does take quite a long time to get it to look that way.
So now we're on to Mill, and Mill's always interesting to paint because it's quite random, it's it's not got any specific pattern to it, it's, it's just really random so you can get patches and stripes and it's completely different on every dog, every mill face is just totally different. So generally I'll just map in the darker areas and lighter areas but I'll always keep the lighter areas quite dark at first, you can still differentiate them from the darker patches but it's later when I come in and start adding the details that I really start going up in tone on them lighter patches. You'll see me coming back in with darks again because I tend to flip between doing the darks and the lights when I start putting detail onto the mill. You'll add your lights and then you feel the need to come back in with some darks and refine things because you can lose a little bit of your darks. But because acrylics are so easy to, to just layer, you can go back and forth and do this without it being a problem. And just keep doing that until it looks the way that you want it to look. So gold size are interesting, not only in the fact that he has a blue one and a brown one, but the brown one's not actually fully brown either, it's actually marbled so it's got some blue in it as well. You can get solid blue eyes in any of the colours and sometimes they have odd eyes as well or two blue eyes and you can get that in any coloured border collie and a lot of other breeds as well but the marbled eyes you only get in the mills because the actual effect is caused by the mill gene. This is not the first marbled eye that I've had to paint. Last year I did, or a year before, I did a, a tri mill collie for somebody and that also had some marbling in its eyes as well. It is on my YouTube channel so I'll link to that above if you want to go and have a look at that. So here we are to the white fur on front of his neck and chest and I always find that white fur is the most time consuming colour to do. There's a lot more layering involved in it than there is a lot of the other colours. And you also have to be really careful not to add your lightest highlights until right at the end or they'll, they'll just not show up. So you've got to be careful not to go too light too quickly and to not go overhanded with the lightest highlights even when you do get to that stage you need to be more sparing with them so that they actually show up against the, the darker base it's even more challenging when you've got clumps of air that's overlapping other clumps and the direction of the air growth is completely different to each other so you've got hair that's growing one direction underneath and then other hair that's growing a different direction above it and you've got little gaps in between and it just makes it all the more complicated to do. So if you want a more in-depth tutorial on this white hair then I'll link to that above and you can go and have a look at that.
So now you can see that I've airbrushed over a lot of that white hair anyway <laughs> and I didn't really show it in footage because it just doesn't seem to show very well in footage when you're doing airbrushing because you keep coming back and doing tiny little bits and then you have to leave it for a while to let it dry and then you come back and spray a little bit more and it just doesn't seem to show up very well in footage and that's why I've not included it but anyway I wanted to fade it out a little bit so that the smaller study would show up better in front of it. And the smaller study depicts Ghost doing what he does, which is his heel work. And there's quite a few photos that uh, his owner has of him doing heel work. So I suggested a study of him doing that because obviously it's, it's what he competes in and what he's good at. So she chose a nice picture, what had been taken of him, uh, so that I could do that underneath. It also meant including a little bit of her in it, her legs and part of her body so far up and I just sort of faded that out so that it didn't sort of stop too abruptly and make her look like she were chopped in half. I finished her legs and what have you first and then I airbrushed over the top of that mainly. Uh, obviously it affected it quite a little bit way down because I wanted it to sort of be slightly faded out and then paint Ghost himself in afterwards so that he stood out a little bit more. So you could still see her legs and what have you, so you, you could see that she was there, but she was just a slightly faded out so that he could still be centre of attention in study. So I'm now working on the final detailed layer on this smaller study and it always takes a bit longer for the size of them to do than, than larger pieces because the details are a lot smaller and it's a lot more painstaking. But anyway, when it's done I'll give you a final reveal and a few different views of the old painting and some details and what have you. And if you're new to my channel and you like what you see and you want to see more of this then please consider subscribing and maybe switching on the notification bell as well. And if anybody has any questions or suggestions then feel free to leave them in comments. If there's any other parts of this painting that you'd like to see a tutorial on like that white fur section then let me know about that as well. So I'm just finishing off with a few final touches now and then that's it for this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!